Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Monday night panel. Shortly, we'll bring on the panel to uh, review Accrington and um, who have we played on Saturday? Who do we play on Saturday? Um, Doncaster, sorry. Um, and uh, so we'll do that in a moment. Um, just to let you know, there's still places available for the end of season dinner, which is on the um, 11th of April. Uh, so if you would like to join us, um, it's run by the Supporters Club. Um, if you'd like to join us, then um, go onto our website and you can book on that. Let's bring Vic on. We have got some announcements to make, so let's bring Vic on. Hi, Hi Vic. Chris. I'm all right. How are you? I had a blank okay? moment then. I had a blank uh, moment then. Who did we play Saturday? <laughs> how can you forget something so memorable? Uh, I know. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, SAS Travel. Um, tomorrow, uh, they're taking the bookings for the remaining Sutton seats that they have available. Uh, I think they've got one coach full, but they have spaces on the second bus. So uh, available tomorrow night from 7 o'clock. They're not open on Thursday uh, because it's the sponsor's dinner. So um, no SAS Travel available on Thursday evening, but they are tomorrow night uh, because of the remaining Sutton spaces that they have available. And we should say well done to the under-18s on Saturday. They beat Wimbledon at Sirencester. And don't forget this coming Sunday, 2 o'clock kickoff, um, Swindon Town's women play Celsi, and that's at the county ground with a 2 o'clock kickoff. So if you fancy some football on Sunday afternoon, get along to the county ground, so support the women. Excellent. Okay, so oh, let's bring our panel tonight on. So we have Martin, Good we evening. have Rob, evening all. We have Good evening. And last but no means least, we have Andrew. There we go. Okay, I will leave you to it, and I will see you later. Chris, thanks very much indeed. Welcome along, gentlemen. Thank you all very much indeed for joining us. Um, I'm I don't know how to sort of introduce this really, apart from the fact that. Yes, we lost again on Saturday. Uh, welcome back, Martin, uh, to the panel. It's been a while. You've been off cricket scoring and stuff like that, but it's nice to have you along. Uh, you. Nick, welcome to from the United States of America. Just tell us exactly where you are at this moment. Uh, I'm in Milford, Delaware, so southern Delaware, United States. And the temperature is? Um, we were in the 70s last week. It's, oh, you call it, oh, we got to do it the opposite way. It's about 15 here, so 14, 15. Well, it was 15 in Devon today. Thanks very much. It was quite pleasant, I have to yeah. say. Uh, evening, Rob. How are you? I'm all right, Vic. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, and Mr. Halls, hello to you. Hello. Hello. Right, let's start off with the league position. Uh, Mr. Garrett joins us as well. Latecomer, Andy Garrett. Good evening to you, Andy. He hasn't quite turned his... Uh, his he can't <laughs> hear you, etc. Uh, he'll join us shortly. Uh, right, in 17th place in the league table is Notts County, uh, with a goal difference of naught. Points 48, played 37. Doncaster, who beat us on Saturday, of course, in 18th place. 46 points from 37 games. Uh, Swindon, as we know, now 19th. 44 points from 39 games. Then Salford, 44 from 39. Grimsby in 21st, 39 from 37. Colchester, 33 from 36. And then the bottom two, uh, Forest Green, 33 points from 38 games. Minus 25 goal difference. And then bottom of the league, Sutton United, 30 points from 39 games, minus 28 goal difference. Let's discuss those league positions. Martin, you don't think there's any chance of Swindon will get relegated this season? No, I don't, I don't think we'll go down. Um, the league position isn't pretty and we won't finish in a pretty position. I mean, I think we'll finish 21st, 22nd. But I think as poor as we are, we've got enough points already. I don't see Forest Green getting the required number of points to catch us. They've got to play a top five in the table, five games in a row at one point against top five in the league, three of them away from home. Colchester, they don't win matches, do they? I mean, I know the teams at the bottom get better towards the end of the season, but I don't think they'll get better enough, if for want of a better term. I think, I think 44 will be enough. And besides, I do not think we'll lose the last seven games. So I think... As dreadful as it's been lately, as dreadful as it probably will continue to be, we're, we're still shit goals, but I think we'll be safe. Rob, I think you might have a, a, a different view to that. I, I love to be as confident as mine, but I don't think 44 points is enough. And my big gripe at the moment is I cannot see where the next point is coming from. We've played two of possibly the worst home 
um, the first worst teams in the division in the last two home games and never really looked likely to pick up a point. And especially on Saturday. I mean, Doncaster were at best average and they were capable, but that's about as much as you can say. For Accrington, probably wouldn't have got many points in the National League North, yet we still managed to lose to them. So from my perspective at the moment, our, our form has gone completely south. We've gone completely down the pan. And something has to change and something has to change quickly. Um, uh, any kind of any kind of result at the moment seems a long, long way from uh, the, the capabilities of this team. And, and that worries me immensely. Martin's point is a good one. Uh, the the se seven more defeats at the end of this season, unlikely as it may seem, is a possibility. Um, the way that we're playing. And, and that worries me immensely. How we're... How a team of Swindon stature can be being talked about at the bottom of League Two with the statistics you read out earlier on, Vic, is nothing short of a disgrace for me, I have to say. And this season started so promisingly and is, is well, I wouldn't say it's it's pittering out. It's not at all, is it? It's just, it's just desperate, desperate lack of entertainment, desperate lack of hope for everybody. And it's a real worry. OK, let's have a look. Um... Uh, Nick says, I I'll put this to all of you in a minute. Um, hi, Nick. Uh, do you think Gav has a plan of formation and players change massively every game? Um, Nick, as a coach, you know, you're looking at that game, I'm sure, on Saturday. What are your thoughts? Um, at the moment, I just think there's too many chopping and changing. And then that looks like the coach hasn't got a clue who his best 11 is because he keeps chopping and changing every week. I think you got to have consistency. I know we've had injuries and different player, you know, different things, but I think you've got to have consistency and it just never seems that you don't know. Let's be honest. If you say, all right, we haven't got a game on Saturday, but the, the following week, no one could sit here now and think, oh, this is going to be our starting 11 because we haven't got a clue because it always changes. You don't know who he's going to play or what's going to go on with it. And that's my biggest problem. There's no consistency with the team. Every week, keep chopping and changing all the time. Do you think there's danger of relegation? Or you, I don't. I mean, Martin, so I think I can't see us. I know Rob said, Where are we going to get the next point? But I can't see us losing all seven games. So I don't think we're going to go down. And let's be honest, those teams, how many games have they won this season? They got to suddenly win seven on, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I just can't see that happening. And, I, and I, as a, Martin said, uh, Forest Green, God, they've got a hell of a running, haven't they? They've got a real tough run of games. But you, you just never know. But I can't see it. I think we're safe. And that's why I've said, you know, to me, if they're going to do something, you might as well do it now. So I think, you know, our season's over. I don't think we're going to get relegated. So, you know, if you're going to, if, if Gavin's not going to get it, let's bring someone in, me personally, start next season now because our season's done. Andrew, I felt for you that first half because I, I'm not sure what there was to say about it apart from it wasn't very good. Let's be kind. <laughs> What were your thoughts during that first four? Um, well, there were. At least we could spend time analysing why it wasn't very good, and there seemed to be quite a lot of reasons um, to list for that. So I suppose that's something. No, it's just, it's oh, it's all a bit it's all a bit symptomatic of some of the things Nick's talked about. Certainly, in the kind of shuffling of personnel, which we're we're kind of now assured as was the coach's decision rather than all this enforced giving players minutes to get. To get up to speed, that that era is over. So it is now on on Gavin Gunning how many changes there are, and whether there's changes in formation, which he did for Mansfield, and then switched it back for the the other two games. So, but no, the the, the first the first half was no sort of response, was it? To um, what the manager said after the Accrington game, if anything, it was a continuation, which is, or maybe it was even a degradation, not a continuation. Maybe it got even worse. So, and. You felt after the second, Doncaster were a bit more in containment mode, and um, you know, I, I think if I think if Glatzel hadn't scored right at the start of the second half, it could have got extremely poisonous by about seventy minutes. But again, I'm not I'm not really sure for all the fact they had more shots and all the rest. Of it, I'm not really sure there was quite enough there to to get an equaliser. We should say, of course, the keeper did make a couple of really good saves, didn't he? So, you know, let's put that in. And I I would also say. The crowd were pretty good second half. I thought they really got behind the team. So that was yeah, no, no. I think no. I think once once you know once you give you give supporters a moment something to hold on, something to sort of grip. They're still responding, but how how can you 
um, it would take a superhuman effort of goodwill, really, to you know try and get lots of chance going in that first half because there's there was just very little to to grasp onto. Yeah, let's uh, read some of these comments out then. Um, let's go back. Actually, uh, Martin, let's go back to to what. Uh, Nick said, do you think uh, Gav has a plan as for uh, formation and players change massively every game? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think it looks like he has much of a plan. Um, you see some of his team selections and you quite sort of frankly think he's spun a wheel and, you know, whatever's come out, he's, you know, he might as well throw it, throw a dartboard at it half the time. Um, every time the board comes up to make a substitution, I'm sort of in fear is the wrong word, but I'm sort of feeling trepidation of who he's going to take off because he seems to take the wrong players off. Um, players seem to have good games and get dropped. You know, I'm not a fan of Hepburn Murphy, but he scored two goals against Tranmere. Next game, not in the starting eleven. Uh, the right wing back, Zach, with the long name, you know, that really complicated name, Zach, whatever his name is, LBZ. Yeah, he had a good game at Mansfield. Didn't get a start at the next game. McGurk's had a good game, not not in the starting line at the next game. It just seems that players have good games, or the players that do have good games, are then rewarded with a place in the starting eleven the next game. I mean, quite frankly, there's been there haven't really been many bright sparks lately, have there? I mean, you just need to clutch onto the, what we have got. And I would say you've got to build a team around Glatzel. Glatzel is the, the one positive. Every time he comes off, it goes south, doesn't it? You saw it at Mansfield. He came, he came off. It went wrong. He picks up these little pockets in between the front two. He occupies. You know, he's, he's a constant menace. I think he's a really talented player. He, we need him to play in the 90 minutes. He, he is our best player playing for 90. Yeah, I do. I have little faith in Gunning and... You know, it's nearly over. He's not going to be, surely he's not going to be in charge next year. I mean, if you want to sell season tickets, Gavin Gunning is not going to be in charge of Swindon Town Football Club, is he? He's, he's not. He's not. You're not going to sell. You're not going to sell season tickets with Gav Gunning in charge. Well, I mean, we we're, all go, we're all go because, you know, <laughs> because we do. But the casuals are not going to go with Gunning in charge of Swindon. Well, strongly put. Uh, are you with us, Mr. Garrett? I am indeed. Oh, well done. Welcome along. Thank you very much Steve, for defeating your technical gremlins. You just yeah. heard that sort of passionate speech from Martin. What were your thoughts, A, on Saturday and B, whether we seem to have a plan or not? Definitely don't seem to have a plan. Um, Saturday, first half was absolutely abysmal. Second half, obviously, we started well with the goal. Um, but it does worry me. You know, Gavin Gunning seems to not seems to have a much of an idea the substitutions on Saturday were, you know, baffling, to say the least. Um, and it's just, there just seems to be absolutely no plan whatsoever. And I think the best thing that they can do at the moment is to get a new manager in before the end of the season. So we've got someone in place and then start preparing for next season. Let's, let's change it now. Um, lots of comments coming in, Rob, about this. Um I mean, it's an ideal opportunity to sue something, isn't it? Uh, we haven't got a game until a week on Friday. There's a gap. I mean, it's not helping anybody, this uncertainty, is it? I mean, I get the fact he's in there till the end of the season, but you want to know where you're going from there, don't you? You need to have some sort of structure in place to know where you're going for next season. We thought we had it, of course, with Michael Flynn. We did think that. He had plenty of time. He came in at the end of the season, had a whole summer to sort a team out. Didn't quite get what we all thought he needed, centre-backs and a decent central uh, defensive midfield player. So does it always work that he, if you need time to have a look at what you're going to do next season? Well, I think it helps. Let's put it that way. I think any manager worth their salt, if they're going to be coming into this Swindon Town job next season, would like ideally to either have a couple of games towards the end of this season or at least know they're in the crowd to see what uh, standard of the players are like. I mean, let's be honest, none of these players at this moment in time, Glatz will possibly apart from what as Martin said, maybe a couple of others have put the effort in. But generally speaking, no one's doing a great job interview just at the moment, are they? Certainly not from a defensive or a midfield perspective. Perhaps the forward line's a little bit better. But I have to say this midfield has given me sleepless nights over the course of the last six or seven months. 
I don't think I've ever seen a worse midfield than what Swindon have got this season. I've seen worse teams. I'm not sure I've ever seen collectively a worse midfield. And and that really worries me because if I only go back two seasons, we were all absolutely um, beside ourselves with how good our midfield players were. If anything, they probably were the best midfield players in the division. And we have gone so far downhill in that part of the pitch that teams just walk through us now. We're paper thin. We don't look like we're going to make a tackle. And whilst all the criticism, and some of it justifiably, has been directed towards the defenders, the protection they get from those in front of them this season is nothing short of abysmal. Um, and that, for me, is one of the one of the main, main reasons why you have to make a decision now as to who your manager is going to be next season. And ideally, if that's not going to be Gavin Gunning, you get somebody else in now. If it is going to be Gavin Gunning, please, please, please get an experienced assistant manager alongside him who knows this league, because that's clearly where his failings are at the moment. He might know players, he may be able to develop players, but he's not got the tactical knowledge to perform at this level. And it's being hopelessly exposed at this moment in time. Nick, I mean, I don't, whatever level of football you play, if you play in defence and you know that the ball is continually coming at you, it's a hard gig, isn't it? I mean, whatever level of football you're playing at, if you're constantly under pressure, how can you, how can you as a coach improve that? The problem I find Swindon have is they have like putting, what was it, round holes in square pegs. But, you know, to me, Khan is not a defensive mid. I like him more attacking. We haven't really got that, to me, out and out defensive mid since we got rid of Louis Reed. And I never knew why they let him go. Because to me, I thought, you know, just a couple of seasons ago, he was outstanding. And then, right, he started off bad last year and it suddenly, again, fell off the cliff. I don't know what happened with him. But there's too many players. I think they're just sort of, oh, we got to get him in. we got to get him in. And we'll throw him in wherever we can put him in. And it's the balance is all wrong. It's not getting the right balance. And to me, as a coach, you, you, you're confident with a system, but you got to have a plan B. You know, and that's why I thought at the start of the season, it was a plan A. There was never a plan B of changing it. And now we just feel we throw players in. And you got to get a decent centre defensive mid and work on it. And if you haven't got that, then you got to work with... If you want to play... The four two three one, which or whatever it is, and you got to work with those two players, who are your two defensive mids, and get and be consistent with the two, because the problem is you always need one sitting. What you don't want to do is pigeonhole someone and say you have to sit, you can push, but if they're not working consistently together, they're never going to get that understanding to get about each other, because you, usually you'll have two and they talk to each other. One goes, one sits. You read off each other. But the problem is, it's changing every week. You're not getting that consistency. So players don't know, defence don't know in front of them kind of thing. Because automatically, as if a fullback goes, someone slides out and then the defensive mid to give you that back four, whatever how you want to play it, you've got the cover still. But that don't seem to happen. There was, like on Saturday, they were playing it across the edge of our area. There was no one there. Mm -hmm. You think, well, who's a defensive mid in this situation? There just wasn't. And that's what I find. We haven't got the players or we're not working. We're putting players in positions that just doesn't work. OK, lots of comments coming in. Uh, hi, Tony. Saturday, why put the captaincy to the goalkeeper? Fraser yeah. Blake, Tracy is vice-captain. My worry, we play Grimsby and Sutton. It can't seem going down. It will be close. Uh, Andrew, you spoke to Gav Gunning after the game. You asked him about the captain. What, what were the reasons for giving Bycroft the captaincy? Um, the the reason the reason was given was to boost Bycroft's confidence, and then um, I think I put it to him that you know it, did it indicate some kind of change of power or voices in the dressing room, and um, that was sort of bettered off. And there there we are. So it wasn't it wasn't entirely um, he wasn't entirely forthcoming. I had a couple of bites of the cherry and didn't didn't really get anywhere as some as sometimes happened. But um, it does it does feel fairly noticeable when you remove it from one of your more experienced, albeit a lot of you know games at sort of national league level and so on um, defenders and give it to your twenty three year old goalkeeper who's just arrived and is in his first football league club so, or you know first first team experience at football league level. So um, I wasn't quite sure what to make of that, but. Um, the, the reason the reasons for it at the moment seem to be somewhat behind closed doors. Okay, uh, uh, what, how is he when you talk to him after the game? I mean, you know, nobody likes losing games. Three in a bounce now, things ain't going well. Let's be honest. Um, mm. How is he? 
How how is he? Um, I should I should say to be be fair to him, whether it's a pre or post match. Some t- sometimes the look in his the slightly more mischievous look in his eyes doesn't come across on when you listen back to it. So I should um, to be completely fair, I should say that first of all, sometimes sometimes it's a little more. It's not quite as I don't know, sort of flat or monotone in person as it might sound. I think so. I should say that, but but no, I think he's. I think you can kind of say, you can sort of sense a frustration evident. I wonder whether he's just, um, you know, now now he's sort of had a bit of time, and maybe you've had the initial sort of freshness and the bounce were off. Whether he's kind of discovering the same problems that Mike Flynn did, and you know, um, I think I think he's pretty much said on the the point that Nick sort of talked about. There isn't really that sort of classic defensive midfielder there, and they sent the closest we've got to Cheltenham. Hmm. Sorry, say that a bit again. What did you say? Bet Cheltenham. Um, I said that. I said that we sent the closest thing we've had to a defensive midfielder this season to Cheltenham. And, oh yes, yeah, yeah. sorry, Liam Kinsella. Sorry, yes. I thought you meant the <laughs> not, um, not the races, Vic. Not, not the, the Cheltenham the festival. Week. I was a little bit concerned. <laughs> but, uh, you're Maybe more like it's being the three forty at market race <laughs> than the elite races at the moment. Yeah, you're off to Cheltenham. Off with you. Uh, Jonathan says, "Why do we always change a winning team? I thought we should be uh, should have stuck with the side." With the last few games that beat Tramir, does the panel feel we need a change of manager now? Andy, what's your view on that? Um, we've discussed it briefly, but we're sort of we're at that point now. We've got seven games left, just over a, a month of the season to go. You would think anybody who's going to be in charge next year would want to see what they've got this year, wouldn't you? Absolutely, yes. Um, I, you know, as I said before, I think we need to get a manager in sooner sooner rather than later. Um, Gavin Gunning's been given his chance um, and he's, you know, not been up to the job. Okay, you, as everyone else has discussed with the um, midfielders, um, our midfield is is a bit of a disaster area. Um, but, you know, you, you've you've got what you've got and you I, he doesn't seem to be able to work with that. There's the chopping and changing every week. Um, the substitutions that don't make sense. It just, you know, we're changing three or four players every game. You know, okay, after the Accrington game, for instance, you expected changes. But, you know, after a winning game, you change. And, it, you know, the, these changes just don't make sense. I think we need to look at a change as soon as possible. Um, Gav Gurney coming out with ridiculous comment of taking players off in games when they've reached his number of minutes, whether they're playing well or not. That's all down to sports science these days, isn't it? Um, interesting reasoning for giving Bycroft the armband at the, at the weekend. Uh, this is Derek Elston. Hi, Derek. Spot on, Rob. Like you, I cannot see we will get a win before the end of the season. Our record of six wins in 30 games, Martin, is relegation form. Well, it's, it's dreadful, isn't it? It is dreadful, but like I say, I think 44 is going to be enough. So... Six winnings in 30. <laughs> I'm just looking at that. I mean, on, on that sort of uh, scenario, in seven games, we're looking at possibly were two. Is that right? Is that fair enough? Is that fair enough assumption? Two out yeah, of seven. I, don't, I don't doubt we're, you know, probably not going to get more than one or two wins on current form. I mean, indeed, I think probably most of this panel, if you said now we're going to collect two wins between now and the rest of the season, we'd take that, wouldn't we? Because we're definitely not going to go down with fifty points, so we, you know, you'd snap your hand off for that. Um, just going back to what was mentioned earlier about the midfield, one comment to make um, at the fans forum: it was mentioned that Khan was the best defensive midfielder in the league. So it does make, and I know he hasn't played the last two games, but we've been poor before that. The midfield's not been good for some time. It does make you question Gunning's judgment if he's coming at that forum saying he's the best defensive mid in the league, when most can see he's not got the discipline to do that role. He looks good. He can look good as an attacking midfielder that can drive forward. But he's not a defensive mid, is he? I mean, what is? I, I can't see what Gunning's seeing with that comment, I'm afraid. I mean, yeah, I'm lost for words on that one, to be honest. I think we all, if we go for the archetypal defensive midfield player, we're all thinking Anthony Grant, aren't we? I mean, out of the last few years, he's your kind of man in that role. But that ain't going to happen, is it? So uh, 
it's that sort of player we're all thinking about. Uh, Jonathan says, we need to act now to change the manager. Players' contracts need sorting. Leave it to the end of the season. We risk losing some good players. Uh, then we go back to square one and rebuild from scratch. Uh, comments on being the captain of Swindon Town's complete insult to the fans of the club, says Daz. Uh, C says there won't be a new manager. Claims not in the country. Currently got my counsellor on speed dial. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, hasn't taken us long to coach the January signings to be as bad as the rest, says Kevin. Uh, we're in free four. We look so disjointed and uh, I just have a vibe something isn't quite right. Now, uh, Ben Garner, I'll, I'll get back to you on this in a minute, Andrew, because uh, we are going to talk about that. But I, the thing is, Rob... I'm, all right, I'm going to read you something now. 1983-84. As we know, we finished 17th, right? Played 46, 58 points, goal difference two. Let me tell you of the bottom four. Fourth bottom, Halifax Town, 48 points from 46 games, minus 34 goal difference. Rochdale, 46 points from 46 games, minus 28 goal difference. Hartlepool, third bottom, 40 points, 38, uh, minus 38 goal difference. Chester City, 34 points from 46, minus 37. Where are they now? There's a very good point. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that's, if we if we objectively look beyond the end of this season, because obviously our focus at the moment is very short term, because that's where um, the results have, have driven us, unfortunately. But it's it's been a downward decline over the course of however many years, isn't it? If you just take it back to the Clem era, OK, we overachieved, as we've said many times before, in that first season under Ben Garner. Nobody really expected a playoff push. No one really expected us to be where we were at the end of the season. But last season was viewed generally as a disaster, yet we still finished in the top half of the table. Hmm. Where does that put us this season? On a serious decline. And that that horrible slope that you talk about on graphs is not showing many upward blips, is it, at this moment in time? which therefore drives you to a conclusion for next season, should we? And I still think your heart of hearts says we will get enough points this season. Your head at the moment still questions it, but your heart of hearts says you will. But where does that leave you at the start of next season if major change is not on the way? And I think that is the biggest problem. I don't doubt that the work that was done in that January transfer window was quite positive. Most of the, most of the signings that we brought in in January have improved certain areas of the pitch but there were gaping omissions with the players that they brought in during that window as we've said so many times about the midfield thought we'd solve the problem at centre back but only with a lone player and of course we seem to pick up players who have injury records as long as they're armed don't we it's incredible how many players we pick up that get injured within a matter of minutes it feels like of being a Swindon Town player it's almost as if that's part of your induction program you've got to get yourself injured um, so there is a there is a major major failing for me at the moment. Not only necessarily at the uh, on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. We really need to sort ourselves out significantly, and I think that is something that's being echoed throughout the terraces just at the moment. There is lots and lots of dissatisfied Swindon fans. I don't think I've heard so many who are apathetic. Is probably the best description for it. They just don't care anymore because they've just been browbeaten so much. And that's a real, real worry, because that will hit mm. attendances significantly. Mm. Uh, Ian says, there's always a team that puts a run together and gets out of relegation, and there is always one that goes into free fall. I fear that is us. Uh, we need to act with the fortnight break and make a change, at least to have some belief. That's Lee. Um, he's, he's the entire game using bad words at the players, while the opposition management are organising their team. Passion is great. But uh, to just be jumping up and down screaming isn't helping anyone, says Anthony. I mean, that word apathy, Nick, I've heard it a lot in the last couple of days. And I think certainly in that first half on Saturday, we'd seen four of the 1969 players on the pitch before the game. There'd been all the, the talk of the, the anniversary of the 1969 League Cup win. And then that first 45 minutes, and you're just sitting there going... Pfft. And I think most of the people around me were going... And that is a problem, isn't it? You know, apathy sort of spreads, doesn't it? Yeah. They probably wish those four players stayed on the pitch. Now <laughs> they couldn't have done no worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what would you do to have those four now? Oh, oh. my God. Yeah. 
but yeah, it just it just seems it does seem so strange and, uh, and what's going on. You want to give the, the team a lift, and then you start, you know, after the Accrington game when everyone was saying how bad it was, blah blah. blah. So you want if it was the reverse that like we went one nil up early and lost two one, it'd be at least you're showing a bit of something. But the way to start that first half and the first half the way it was was just oh my god. What are you expecting from your fan base? You, could, you know, they're paying good money for for that, and it's just 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 doesn't seem it. Is you don't see no one getting on at each other and having a go and showing a bit of passion for the club. It just it just like people say now, it feels like they're on the beach. A lot of them. What I don't get if you know our youth team's done well this year. I know it's a massive step up mm. from the youth team to the first team. It's huge, but for one or two of them, especially like we're saying defensive mid, who's the youth team at? Why not? Give him a chance because, like we've said, some of us have said, I don't think we're going to go down. I think we've got enough. I don't think those bottom two or three are going to have a run that will keep them, that will get them above us. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. But so for me, what, this is a great time to bed a youth player or two into the set. If if people don't want, ain't got the passion to be on that team wearing that shirt, bring some of the youth in. They've showed what season they've had this year. Yeah, they have, yeah. You know, yeah. I know it's a massive step and it's <clears throat> totally different youth, but you've got to give them. You, why do you have a youth team if you're not going to give the better players a chance? I think it is fair to say, though, that we had a lot of youth players in the squad set up earlier in the season and people were moaning that we had a lot of youth players in the squad. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess, you know... you. you... Yeah, but I'm not getting loads. I was just saying, like, especially defensive mid, we need mm. someone who's going to just sit there. And, you know, nowadays, I think it's got to a stage... Where you have to sell to someone, you're sitting there. I don't want you going above, you know, you're just sitting in front of our back four. We can't give you too many gaping holes coming through the middle. You don't want to say that the players usually as a coach, but I, I, I think you've got to go back to basics because we're letting too many silly goals in. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's unbelievable, says Ricky, that we're a poor League Two team. A club like Swindon should be a championship team. We're at worst mid table League One. Craig says, I've not seen Town play live since Stockport away, but the last few games we've gone really backwards. Like others here tonight, I really fear that we're in a downward spiral now. If we were five points better off, we could at least look forward to seeing some of the under-18s getting a run out. Uh, this season is going down to the wire. Um, right, Andrew. Uh, here we are. Claire says, I'd be interested to hear what the panel would think of Ben Garner returning. He's been discussed on social media uh, over the weekend. By the way, uh, I'm not saying that I would want him back, says Claire. You were there. He was your co-commentator on Saturday. He was analysing the game. What are your feelings? What are your thoughts? Um, I, firstly, shall I, I put some minor conspiracy theories to rest by saying how um, how Ben sort of popped up with us for a couple of games. Um, the simple, the the sort of simple truth is when when Swindon were at Colchester, the Colchester media staff were saying, oh, he was Ben was you know trying to do a bit more media stuff because that I think that was something he wasn't very comfortable with initially at Bristol Rovers, got better at it with Swindon and so on. And so I thought, oh, we'll contact him and see if he fancies doing a couple of games and and that's it. And he get you know, we, we do try and sort of book people up in advance. So um any sort of any kind of timing of games where he appears is uh, purely coincidental. I mean it's brilliant for us that the first one was Newport because you know Ali McCurdy was back and, and all the rest of it. So um it, there's no there's no sort of effort by him to kind of Put himself out there at Swindon and be obvious about it. It's um, we thought he might be interested. It'd be interesting to get him on. He seemed quite keen, so um, so we did it. So, so that's it. Um, as for as for bringing him back, I think I think his plans are more kind of taking time out until the summer, ideally, and then seeing if he can go in a club in the summer and get a chance to you know sort of do some do some building before he starts. Um, if you're going to look for an option who might sort of bring a bit more structure and control to games then um i'd be i'd be tempted but obviously it's just slightly biased when you hear when you see someone or hear someone sort of picking the game apart in front of you in real time and thinking that that makes sense to me so um i think i think we could do worse i understand fans are ambivalent about him but i think the, i think the club's instinct at the moment is to try and just get things into dock with as minimum change as possible so i don't i don't think that i don't think they particularly want to make a change but um like I say, if you're going to do it, I think you've got to do it now because the next. Sorry, I'm on a bit of a speech here because the next the next two games seem to really count. Really, the kind of Sutton and Notts County ones because Notts County are in horrible form. Mm -hmm. uh, Sutton are the bottom club, but after that, you've got Barrow, Wimbledon, and Walsall, all of whom are you know legitimate. 
playoff contenders, uh, two of whom have beaten us extremely comfortably in the reverse game. So um, the argument is, if you're going to change, do it now. Don't hang around. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily be averse if averse to someone just to just to ease our nerves a bit because it it, it, feel, it feels at the moment that you know it's um it's just a, a struggle to bring things together. You don't you don't sort of see the the patterns really kind of getting implemented, I suppose, that they yeah. seem to be trying to do. Yeah. Oh, mm. I got on for long enough. No, no, I, 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 I value your insight. Uh, personally, I don't think this is Graham. Personally, I don't think he would do as good a job as before. Those players we got in that season were all from Ben Chorley. Uh, we simply don't have that setup anymore. I mean, that is an important point, Andrew. I mean, you obviously were dealing with both. Yeah, no, no. When we when sort of Ben did the Newport game, we sort of had quite a long chat with him, and he he did say that that was just a partnership that clicked for whatever reason. They seemed to have the same kind of view and vision about football. And the other thing he said, which I, not sure would be so much the case now is that they were they were essentially left as a two to try and get in the players that they they wanted to get pretty much whereas um at the moment you assume you know well i think for for january well clearly jamie russell was working beforehand whether i'm sure that's in consultation with mike flynn and so on but at, at this point one you can't get any new players in and then two i don't know what the club's already sort of thought about contracts and so on so no um, it's no. all as 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 Rob's kind of broadly alluded to, it's so when I sat down to speak to Clem in person, it's hard it's hard to see what the long term strategy is for the club at the moment. Much as um, you know, Jamie Russell sat in there and is clearly trying to work and work and implement things. Fair enough. Um, it would be nice to hear from the owner. I think uh, I think we'd all agree on that. Just to see where we're actually. Where we're going. Um, a new manager needs to see a squad in training and match play. Then he can assess who to keep. Uh, perhaps a strong message needs to be sent. If you don't want to play for the club and wear the badge of pride, then please exit left and let the young lad start for the last seven games. Get your slippers off and boots on, says John. Uh, worry is, who would want to come to Swindon Town with all this baggage being carried at the moment? How can we get a new manager in when we don't know what players we will have at the end of the season? Ah, Steve. Hi, Steve. Uh, Neil Warnock must be pretty much your neighbour. Uh, can you have a word and bring him to the next home game? Well, he lives down the A38 and across the bridge. So uh, so it's quite a little way. If he wants to come, he's, he's welcome. Um, Rob, as always, hitting the nail on the head. Next season will be a relegation battle. Hopefully it's about staying in Division 2, not in the National League. Oh, Andy. Oh, goodness me. Try and be cheerful for us. Because we need a bit of cheerfulness. <laughs> oh dear, you've asked me something now, Vic. Yeah, to be I, I just, you know, I think we are. I think we're all of the same mind. We all want something to happen. We all want something to change. We all want some to know what the direction's going to be. What are your I, thoughts on that? I think that's it. I think you know we need something from the club. You need someone from the clubs or Clem, in particular, coming out and sort of saying which direction we're going in. You know, I think we'll survive this year. I think we'll be fine this year. But the worry is, we go into next season, um, are we still going to be in the same boat? Are we still going to be having the same sort of problems we're getting at the moment? You know, if we hadn't won those games at the start of the season, we'd be very, very, very much in a relegation battle. And I can see us next season, if things don't change dramatically, heading for the National League, unfortunately. And that's not somewhere where I particularly want to be. Well, it's interesting. I'm going to watch Torquay on Saturday. They're playing Hampton and Richmond in National League South. Mm. Not too long ago in League One, if you remember. Um, exactly. Yes. Martin, let's have a look at uh, soon as seven fixtures then. And you tell me who where the points are going to come from. 29th <laughs> of March, Swindon against Notts County. 1st of April, April Fool's Day. <laughs> uh, Certain United against Swindon. 6th of April, Barrow against Swindon. Early start, long journey. Uh, 13th of April, Swindon against Wimbledon. 16th of April, Walsall against Swindon. 20th of April, Grimsby against Swindon. Long trip to Cleethorpes. And then the 27th of April, Swindon against Morecambe wraps it all up. Where are the points coming from? Now you're asking. Um, well, Good Friday, Notts County. Notts County are an absolute free fall. Their their season's almost mirrored ours, hasn't it? They've started probably 
most of the season they've been four, five, six points above us, but their trajectory has been exactly the same. We're on a similar slide. Uh, we might be able to get a point in that one. Let's be positive. Um, so in a way, that's tricky, isn't it? They've given themselves a glimmer of hope in their own relegation battle. They're three points from safety now. I know they played more games than the other two, but they've given themselves a chance. Our waveform's dreadful, isn't it? I mean, we take a point there as well. Can't see us getting anything against Barrow. Let's be let's be realistic. That's a tricky game. They did a number on us in the reverse game. What's the next game after that, Vic? Do we move on to uh, Wimbledon, Wimbledon at home? Mm. Yeah, well, probably difficult to get anything from that one. So what are we on two from four? Okay, um, Warsaw away. Uh, well, they, their form has dipped ever so slightly, <laughs> hasn't it? Their, their form has dipped ever so slightly after a good run. But let's put. Let's say we get nothing from that, so that's two from five. Um, then it's Grimsby away, isn't it? Well, we'll uh, Grimsby away, yeah. Yeah, we'll get a point up at Grimsby, because by that point, neither team will have anything to play for, so we'll both get a point. Um, so that gives us three points. Yeah. Um, Morecambe at home last game of the season. Last game of the season, that's tricky to predict, isn't it? Morecambe are in the playoff sort of running, but by that point, they could be out of the playoff running. They could be on the beach. So it's difficult to assess that game. We're finished the season with a win. Come on, let's let's we'll, we'll get fifty points. That is the prediction. We'll get fifty okay. points. All right, Martin, we'll 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 take that one. Um, Thirty points against Morecambe says Craig to stay up. Lose the other six. <laughs> uh, do you not think you need to get the players you have working for the shirt? It's getting them bonding. You need a manager that puts the fear of God into them. Step up a gear. You have nothing less to offer than the best. Uh, well, we've just run through the fixtures there, Rob. I mean, it's, you look at them. Um, Sutton is always a tricky place to go, let's be honest. Walsall is as well. Grimsby, where well, we know it's a long way to Grimsby. It's a heck of a long way to Barrow. I mean, I, I basically, I'm really disappointed Saturday's off because that would have been another one ticked off, wouldn't it? I mean, it's just we're at that stage of the season now, aren't we? We just want it over with. Can I just point out that you've both just said going to the team who are bottom of the league who've barely won a game all season is going yeah. to be a tricky prospect. Tricky game. Does that not sum up exactly the mess that Swindon yeah. are in this season? I would agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. It really, right. really does. I mean, I you read out those fixtures there and I was chuckling away at Martin's predictions, God bless him, because his predictions aren't the best. But um, <laughs> it, it's probably... It's probably realistic most of what he said. To be fair, I mean, it's and that that therein lies the issue. I think we, uh, I think we all, if if only we could have won one of these last two home games. I know if only two very very small words, but they mean quite a lot. You get at forty seven points, you probably feel safe. Mm. Things start to feel like you can build for next season, and that is the biggest issue for me. I mean, forget the. Uh, Forget the, the the scenario we currently find ourselves in. We have to look at the bigger picture. We seem to have lost sight of the bigger picture because we are having to act as a short-term buffer just at the moment just to make sure that we get through this season. And you can't just keep going season by season like we're doing just this moment in time. You've got to have that long-term vision. You've got to build for a sustainable future. We lose managers hand over fist. We lose players hand over fist. We've Our turnover of staff, both on and off the pitch, over the course of the last three seasons, it's been incredible. It's been really, really staggering. I know the days of long-term contracts and one-player clubs seem to have gone by the wayside significantly now. But surely, if you, would, if, you, if you try and make your club an attractive proposition, players will stay for two or three seasons. And if they don't, you sell them on for bigger fees and you make money out of them. And that's the, I guess that's the Sandro logic that um, people didn't buy into significantly. But at least if, you, if that works successfully, you do get some money coming through the coffers and that's what you need. And for me, we, we seem to have, we've, we've had visions, we've had ideas, we've had plans. None of them seem to be sustainable or none of them seem to hang around for too long. We change direction like we change the wind. And that feel that is not the recipe for a successful football club. That's what we've got to change. Uh, Matt says, I'm amazed Walsall wanted it off, to be honest. What a gimme they would have had. Um, Nick, I mean, the point is, it seems to me, you know, the, the transfer windows are a nightmare because you have to change the team not once, but twice a season. And I was thinking about those four players on Saturday. Joe Butler, Roger Smart, Don Rogers, John Trotter. Goodness knows how many games they played for Swindon between them. 
I mean, yeah. when you, when you get fifty games for Swindon now, you go and get a, a testimonial, don't you? I mean, it, it just seems that is half the problem. You don't know what the team's going to be in August, and then you don't know what the team's going to be in January. It just changes. Yeah, the, the the problem you have nowadays is all about money. So you start your season off. We haven't got enough money to buy players, so we got to loan players. We loan them. We want to do well. We all want our teams to do well. So if we do well, like with Kemp and Young, they get taken off us because they're only loan mm. players. So mm. do you want to lose them? Yeah, I'll lose players every January, and it means we must be doing well. So I'll gladly lose players every if that's the case. But then you got a budget. you got a plan for that because that's always going to happen. You know, fans, I know as fans, we want players to stay. But it's like... I say to him, if a if a boss come if another company come to you and yeah. offer you double your money, you're gonna say, Oh no, I'm loyal to my company. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they all bold at the players. Yeah. It just makes me laugh the way they do that. And then, you know, you can't blame the players. The career is so short. You know, if you get an injury, your career could be over tomorrow. So you can't blame the players in that way. But that's the way, you know, the lower divisions, because they haven't got the money, it is all about the loan. But realistically, can you? I don't, and again, I don't know the system how it works. But you'd like to get your loan players in for the season, not for you know they go back in January because that just you're re, like you're doing it every year. You're rebuilding in January all the time. Mm. But even though you got to give credit, some of the players that come in in January, we're all excited about. Mm. Mm. We, to me, I think we should do better than where we are. So then, where does that come down to? No, but no, I don't like you know, picking at things I'm a coach myself, but then you look at the coach because why isn't it better with the players we got? So uh, this makes it awkward all the time. Um, Andrew, what, this season-long loan is a complete nonsense, isn't it? Because it isn't, is it? Um, you know, it, it, they get a recall in January. Uh, and as Nick says, if they're doing very well, MK Dons went, oh, I'll have Kent back. Thanks very much. That is half the problem, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything... You can really do about it because it, it does seem that there's some kind of i guess it's for everyone's protection really in a sense these uh, the fact you have these recall clauses in in january because obviously if you've um on the other side if you've got a loan in and they're not playing and they're either injured or they're not much good um you know it gives them a, it gives both parties a chance to to move on but, but as you say the counter is that but i i don't know how i don't think there's any way around the the sort of january break it just seems to be I think I think I'd have to check this, but I think I think it's broadly sort of part of the part of the paperwork in principle, really. So lots of sides had to do it. Um Morecambe have got pretty much a you know, three quarter two thirds of a, a new team, for example. Um, from you know, a, they've sort of had a similar thing. Their top scorer got recalled, got shoved out on loan again, uh, Mellon Junior. So um Swindon aren't alone in that, but um it's the risk you, you take for not bringing in players on a permanent basis. Uh, hi, Matthew. You don't know what team it is each week at the moment with Gav Gunning in charge. Um, Stuart says, if you get it right on the pitch, the commercial side will follow. But Clem seems to be more interested in the commercial side. If that's not very successful either. Uh, hi, Claire. If the team is performing well, then players will want to stay. Lone players will try harder to prove a point and then get recalled. You see, the point is, Andy, about this. You get used to some players by January and then you have to get used to a whole new team again. And as a as a T as a supporter, you want to support your players, don't you? But then you don't know who half of them are by January, and then you have to start again. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know that seems to be the thing with modern football, isn't it? That you bring in lone players at the start of the season, as the, as others have already said. You know they do well, they go back. Um, the only one is is young, who's scored all his goals for us and hasn't done much for Bradford, I don't think. Since he's uh, since he's gone back there, um, but yeah, you you know you look at the players that we brought in since in January. Um, Glatzel is an absolute class act. You mm -hmm. know, you as Martin said earlier, you could build a team around him, and he would be a lot better player with better players around him. Um, of the others, you know, you've got um, I can't pronounce his name. El Mazzetti, is it? El Mazzetti. Uh, that's the one. <laughs> Um, he's obviously only a lone player. Uh, McGurk shows, you know, glimpses of, of what he might be. But again, you know, he's never played um, first team football until he came here. You know, so it's difficult. You know, we, we we're trying to get um, it was the other one, um, Farrell Johnson, who's obviously injured. 
the, the bit that we did see of him, I thought he looked a very, very decent player. Um, unfortunately, he's now out injured for the rest of the season. So, you know, it's just, it's frustrating because I can't see a way that we could, you know, that it's going to change. You're always going to get the players that come in at the beginning of the season. If they do well, they're going to go back and then you're going to see another, virtually another team come in. And, you know, I think what you want to try and do is bring your own players in. Um, so they're your players. Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I'd, I'd certainly like to see a, a, sw a team of Swindon Town players. That's not going to happen anytime soon because it ain't the way of modern football, is it? That's the problem. No, no absolutely. I think, Martin, you should explain what you're also watching at the same time because you've got... You got Martin is very, very uh, ambidextrous because he's following something else as well. So what are you following, Martin? No, it's just a game of cricket on in the background that I've put a pound or two on that um, I'm just keeping an eye on. I wouldn't normally watch the Pakistan Super League, but um, as it's on Sky Sports, I put a pound or two on it. And um, I'm duly going to lose a pound or two because um, the team chasing needs three runs from four balls. So oh, that's okay. the end of the bet. So who is uh, who's actually playing? Oh, come on, Vic. I can't pronounce the names. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, you're going to lose, so that's right. Yeah. Uh, Dad says, Jake Young is injured, hamstring operation, out for the rest of the season. Dan Kemp's gone back to MK and done reasonably well, of course, as as to have they. So let's uh, let's wrap this up. We've got 10 minutes or so to go. What's your ideal scenario, Martin, in terms of what happens between now and the end of the season, the close season, and next season? Well, ideally, we get safe as soon as possible. And for some supporters, that could mean as many as two wins. So let's get them two wins as soon as possible. Draw a line under this season. I don't think we'll make a managerial change between now and the end of the season. So I'm not going to get my hopes up on that one. I hope that, you know, after that last game against Morecambe, you know, we get that tweet with a corner flag on the, you know, in the photo saying, you know, that, Swindon departed company of Gavin Gunning and we, you know, we wish him all the best for the future. I hope we then appoint a manager in a more timely fashion, which you can't necessarily bank on with Swindon Town because we've been known to take our time or, you know, with these decisions, you know, let's get a manager in before the playoff finals, you know, let's get a manager in before the football season finishes for once. Let's get organised, let's sign some players before the last two days of the transfer window. You know, let's get some players in the door. Let's not have like a supermarket sweep on, you know, the 31st of August or the 1st of September. Let's spend pre-season with our new players. That's the problem. We're signing players too late. We're, we're not... The pre-season should be an opportunity to build a team, to see what each player can do. But we're not doing that. We're going into the season... The first six, seven, eight games of the season is our pre-season. So we're, we're behind the eight ball all the time. So quite frankly, a bit of organisation, better communication from the club, a manager that's sort of managed some games would be nice. And not Neil Warnock, because he's had his time. He's 75 years old, you know, but a good, competent manager that perhaps, you know, when the announcement comes through that we've got a manager, wouldn't it be nice that we've actually heard of the manager for a start? And he's not some, you know, randomer that's managed in the sort of Republic of Ireland second division or something. So, yeah, lots to do. I don't think we'll do it. I think we're on an inevitable slide to National League football. Not not for next season, but the season after, I'm afraid. Uh, but we live in hope. <laughs> wow, if that's your hope then, Martin, I'm really... <laughs> what about you, Rob? I mean... A lot of what Martin said makes sense. I mean, in days gone by, you'd go to the pre-season friendlies and you'd be seeing your new signings, wouldn't you? That that would be the way of it. You go and see the new signings you'd sign in the summer, then they bedded in during pre-season. That, that was always the natural way of it. And then Sky TV invented this ridiculous transfer window. And so everybody has to wait till the end of August, uh, which unsettles everybody. We're not talking about Swindon. It unsettles everybody. They don't know who they're going to have in. And you have to wait, don't you? I've lost track of the number of times we've had phone-ins during the start of the pre-season or during pre-season when we've all said the same thing. Consistency, 
make sure that we've got a manager in early, make sure that we've got the players in early. We will not wait to the end of the January, the August transfer window to bring in five or six players, make sure they're with us for the start of pre-season training and actually build a side around it. We have not done that for so many seasons now, it feels. And OK, the Bengana season, there were good reasons for that because obviously we didn't have players, a significant number of players under contract and had to work quickly. But there was no excuse for last season, no excuse at all because there was the opportunity to bring players in in that window. We had a manager in place from the end of the previous season. We should have done our business much more um, quickly than we did. And as a result of not doing so, we probably missed out on a significant number of players. That's a scenario that I'd love to put in the dustbin for next season. And we solve that problem. If we solve that dilemma, then Martin's hugely expectation hope of not being in the National League in two years' time can be avoided. We can start to move forward once again, but we have to have that and go back to probably the same thing I'm blue in the face saying tonight. We have to have that plan that everyone buys into and that we have to have those players in place in time for us to implement it. That's the most important part. If you haven't got the coach to do it, you go and change the coach. If you haven't got the manager to do it, you go and change the manager. If you haven't got the team behind the scenes to do it, you go and change the team behind the scenes. But it has to be done before the season ends or it has to be done in the very first week of pre-season. Otherwise, we cannot be left behind this summer once again. All the all the worries will come back once again. Nick, we thought we'd done that last season, didn't we? With Mike Flynn, he had the whole of the summer. Um, you know, he'd done well at Newport, experienced Division Two manager. And here we are again. Yeah, I know. I did. I'll, I'll be honest with you, when they brought him in, I thought it was a good sign getting him in early. It's like, you know, he, what, none of us know what the, you know, if we all knew it, we'd all be managers, what the magic sort of thing is. Look at yeah, Chelsea yeah. for years. Well, Chelsea would change their managers. They go and win something. So for Chelsea, you could say, well, hang on, it worked for them. They keep changing managers. They go and win something. So you would always say, of course you would, getting them in early. That's why we're all sort of saying now, to me, I'd like to see if he, if Gavin, like we said at the start, if Gavin's not going to be there next year, get someone in now. Give them, get it in early. If, if they got someone in mind who can do it, if they haven't and they got to wait to the end of the season, who knows? They think someone else might get fired who they got interested. But you would always say the earlier you can do it because they get to know the team bonding, you go away on pre-season. So, yeah, of course it does. You know, I've got, I've got on here Crawley Stockport, you know, Scott Lindsay. Mm. You get him? <laughs> He's doing better at Crawley, and I never thought much of him. Well, but, you can get in the playoffs if they win tonight, can't they? They'll be in the playoff yeah. position. Yeah. So What's the score, just, by the way? Uh, nil-nil. Nil-nil. No, it's only in the 10th minute, so it just kicked off. Yeah. So, but that's the the thing I find, is one minute you can get someone in last minute. If they do well, they say, oh, you know, let's be honest, the glory years at Swindon, Hoddle, Ardiles, they were player managers. No one had a clue what they'd never managed before. You'd probably think at the time when they got Macari, and, and then it, you know, let's how and let's be honest, how bad did it start with Macari with him? Yeah. And his assistant had that big bust up. You know, you figured that ain't gonna work. What he did, and then we got off. We had so many good years under that. That system worked for us at that time. Would it work again? We brought Jody Morris in, and it didn't go great with Jody Morris and stuff like that. So you just, it, it just never know. Ben Garner, as we said, come in last minute right at the start and look we got to the playoffs mm. they should have done see who knows it's just trying to get you know I thought last year Flynn was a good signing I, I liked it it was done early it was great and it started off for nine games it looked great <laughs> it looked a master stroke but it's gone off the cliff and oh we're, we're going through this is a you know, disaster at the moment so who knows what's the you know what works sometimes it will and sometimes it won't but I think if you ask Everyone, 99% would say, yeah, do it early, get them in, get them sorted, get them, you know, get the feel of the club, get them to bond, team bonding and stuff. And it it would work. But, you know, who knows what it is. I wish I did. I'd be a millionaire. Well, I think we all would. I mean, that's the trouble, Andrew, isn't it? We None of us knows the magic secret. Otherwise, we'd all, you know, be top of the league and win the Champions League every year, wouldn't we? I mean... You know, Pep Guardiola is able to produce world-class football because he's got world-class players. You know, it's that simple, isn't it? Yeah, no, and I, I suppose Nick's point's quite nicely illustrated by Doncaster because I think Doncaster did pretty much all of the things on our, our tick list there. They got manager in early in Grant McCann. They got in a lot of players early. 
and had a lot of injuries and they're useless for the first half of the season and they had to go and you know find a keeper and and find a winger in January and all that and they're they're suddenly a bit better so there's there's no straightforward answer um I just think I just think it probably needs for, firstly a bit of communication and a bit of clarity really as to um are they going to keep Gavin Gunning for the rest of the season what are their what are their long term views um do they still see him as someone they could back long term or whether they will say he's here till the end of the season then we'll try someone else um I guess then doing that might be inherently counterproductive all of its own. So, I, but it, it comes back to a bit of what Rob said and the club should try and communicate some sort of vision. And maybe if they want to sign players early next summer, they're going to have to get close to paying what they want at that, um, at that point, which probably costs you a little bit of a premium. Yes. Um, Hi, Neil. We spent three transfer windows saying we'll sign some experienced players to have a solid and physical spine to the side. Then we need some experienced coaches and a football manager who has some clue and is qualified to do the job uh, they're applying for, rather than someone who's from some non-league outfit or coaches uh, who are basically unknowns. Uh, we don't. Why don't we go and get a player manager who now how is ex Premier League and defensive minded? The way things are doesn't look good, says Alistair. Um, and Graham says, slightly tongue in cheek. Can we have a serious discussion on why kickoffs are slightly delayed? I think that's uh, today's slightly tongue in cheek remark. Uh, Andy, um, what? Uh, how would you like to see it done? I mean, are you in agreement with most of the panel? Absolutely. Um, you know, like Nick said uh, earlier, that um, Mike has been coming in early last season. I thought was a masterstroke. I thought that was the right thing to do. Sadly, you know, he had a great start. Sadly, then things went wrong. What went wrong behind the scenes? Who knows? Um, we hear different rumours, etc. But um, it all seemed to sort of go downhill, didn't it? Um, yes, I think we need to change now. I think we need to do something before the end of the season, get someone in. Um, so you've got someone in place that can then recruit, you know, and we get players in early. Um, because I'm really, really worried for next season as, as things stand. I really, really think that we um, we could have a struggle next season. Goodness me, another season in League Two is depressing enough, quite frankly, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, well, there we are. I think that's about it, gentlemen. Thank I, I know, Rob, actually late kickoffs drive you to distraction. As does the clock on the screen. No, the clock. Uh, the clock, which is, <laughs> I think, at most is 10 seconds behind. Uh, 11 the this week. Yeah. Have you noticed that, Andrew? Um, how uh, you know the, the clock is always 10 seconds behind your stopwatch. Have you ever noticed it, that? You're, you're right, it, it is a little bit. I, I prefer looking at the Rolex because it's clean now. That's <laughs> yes, it's been clean. <laughs> so, we should say thank you to the company who's done it, they've done a very good job. It looked nice, white, and sparkling on Saturday. So, well done. Um, right, uh, da -da -da -da. the crafty general says that sports psychologist will be a key addition. It's a young team at the moment. That's just come in. Uh, Chris is here. Yes, she is. And on mute. She's not now. Hello. No, I'm, uh, I'm all right now. I'm all right now. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks so, so much, everybody. Um, next week, we are changing uh, tact. We are on, a, on the sofa and we've got Lawrence Figaro. So Lawrence is over in Ireland at the moment playing. Um, and so he will be with us next Monday. So we will see you then. Thank you very much to all the panel. Thank you for all your comments that come in. Um, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.